Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the readings that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. But occasionally we deviate from that, and today is Sunday, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. And we have all sorts of wonderful lessons that we're going to read today. Uh, the two lessons that are appointed for the Holy Communion service, which we will celebrate at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. We've got an epistle from uh, St. Paul's letter to the, uh, first letter to the Corinthians, uh, in which we'll talk a little bit about temptation. Uh, and then we've also got a great gospel reading, one that's going to be very well known uh, to you, and that is the story of the prodigal son. Uh, and then we will also have a sermon at our five o'clock evening prayer service uh, based on one of the letters, uh, one of the readings that are appointed for evening prayer. But I thought to this morning what we would do is we would look at the collect appointed for today. Now remember what a collect is. A collect is the prayer at the beginning of the service, uh, after our initial uh, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, uh, I say the Lord be with you, you respond in with thy spirit. And then we have what is the collect or the collected prayer of the church. This is the prayer that kind of sums up the theme for that particular Sunday's worth of worship. Uh, and so, the, and the collects are very ancient. They have been collected going back hundreds and hundreds of years uh, and have been propagated throughout the life of the church. Uh, so the collect appointed for the ninth, sun, ninth Sunday after Trinity is this. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and to do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, now, so this is very interesting to me because how often do we hear, if we have a conversation about theology or about salvation or about membership in the church, somebody will say, yeah, but why do I need that? Because I'm a pretty good person or that person is a pretty good person. Uh, and so somehow the assumption is that by being good, you've earned your way into salvation. Uh, the reality is, of course, is that salvation is a free gift from God and it is only through the name of Jesus Christ. We are told again and again that nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus says uh, that it is only through him. He is the way, the truth, and the life and nobody comes to the Father except through him according to St. John's Gospel. Uh, and we also know St. Paul says that it is only in the name of Jesus Christ that we are saved. Uh, and of course, Jesus says we must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. And that baptismal formula is to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So, so membership in the church is absolutely vital. Why is that? Well, primarily it's because we are born with the consequence of original sin. The, the consequence of our being sons of Adam and Eve, being human beings, is eternal separation from God. Uh, yes, we were created in God's image. Yes, we were created good. And then sin entered the world. We seem to have forgotten that very important point, right? Sin enters into the world and we are separated from God. The image of God has been distorted in us. Uh, and that, can, that break from God, that separation from God, continues until the coming of Jesus Christ, who came down to earth in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was born as a child, lived among us, ministered to us, and then ultimately died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. And so it is that the separation between God and man, the chasm has been breached by the cross of Jesus Christ, by his atoning death. And so no matter how good we think we are being and no matter how many good things we think we can do, without God, we really can't do objective good, right? I mean, we may do good things, but we can't do the type of good that earns our way into salvation because we are distorted by sin. And that distortion, that effect of original sin will distort the way in which we do things and our purpose and our result. I know that's hard for us to hear, folks, but it's absolutely vital. The good news, of course, as we've learned from the colic, is that we're not left there, that God gives us all the grace necessary for us by that regeneration, by that being born again, by becoming taken out of the body of Adam and grafted into the body of Christ. It's because of that we now 
have all the grace necessary to live real good lives. Not that we're earning our way in by being good, we're being good in response and in gratitude and in thanksgiving for what he has done for us, given us the free gift of eternal life. That's why we do the good, because we're becoming more and more like Jesus. So all that, right, we just heard, now listen to the collect again. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee the Spirit to think and do always such things as are right. But give us that Holy Spirit, Lord, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee, right, grace, be enabled to live according to thy will. And ultimately, that will is to glorify Jesus Christ. And we end the prayer through Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, we should be good. We should do good, but we really can't do the type of good that earns us salvation, because it's not possible. But when we get the free gift of God through faith, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior and seek to follow him, well then brothers and sisters, we are equipped by the Holy Spirit and filled to overflowing with his grace so that we can reflect that image of God and do his will and receive the gift of eternal life. Today's Sunday, join us for worship. We look forward to having you with us, whether it be in person or online. And I hope you have a glorious Sunday. May God bless you.